Hey guys, today we're going to look at how to model a word problem in terms of a linear equation. Um, for a very detailed explanation of a problem that is basically identical to this, uh, take a look in the description below. I'm going to leave you a link. All right, in this particular problem, I'm going to move through it a little faster so I can get to more problems for you. All right, but every explanation that uh, you probably need is going to be either in this video or definitely in that other one. All right, so for the following exercise, consider the scenario the number of people afflicted with the common cold in the winter month steadily decreases by 225 each year from 2005 to 2010. In 2005, 12,025 people were afflicted. So it, sends, it then tells us to find the linear function that models the number of people inflicted, okay, right, with the common cold, uh, as a function of the year. So essentially, they're asking us anytime they give a statement like this, they're saying to model the number of people inflicted or afflicted, I think they meant to say. Um, that's what we are looking, we are looking to find an equation here that is going to describe this. So the number of people afflicted is going to be C, and I want C, the number of people afflicted with the common cold is going to equal some, you know, blah, 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 with variables and all this stuff, okay? So the, uh, we need a linear model, okay, in order to do this. Now, it's a linear model because they're telling me that the decrease or the change that's happening is going to be constant each year. They didn't tell me, hey, it's constant, right? But in terms of interpreting it, it is constant because it's not changing. So y is equal to mx plus b. So my the y here is going to be c, or the number of people with the cold. The slope here is the change. The change here is going to be a decrease of 205 people every single year. So it has to be negative 205. Now that's going to be negative 205 times some value x, right? Now we can write our value of x there. However, in this problem, they want the number of people with a cold to be a function not of x, but of t. So x in this problem will instead be replaced with t. And then plus now, what's known as the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is basically known as the starting value. So it sounds like they're starting at a time of 2005, right, in the year 2005, and the 12,025 people were afflicted. So that is the starting value, okay? That's the y-intercept. So this is now the linear uh, model, okay? And you can think about this, right, in 2005, if... 1,225 people were afflicted, and they're telling you every single year it decreases by 205, then how many people will be afflicted in the next year? In other words, from 2005 to 2006 now, uh, how many people would be afflicted? Well, you'd say, well, it's going to be this number minus the 205. Yeah, sure. It will be, right? That's exactly what this model is telling us to do, right? Plug in the value of 1. You're going to multiply that by negative 205, so that will work out to be negative 205 and then add that to 12025, and it's a subtraction, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now it says find a reasonable domain and range. So remember, domain is the list of possible x values, and in this problem, we're talking about time values, okay? Because that's the x. So it's telling us from 2005 until 2010. So now here's the thing. The time represents the period of, or the number of years, okay? Time will represent the number of years. So time can start at the beginning, meaning at zero, and the time can go all the way up to what value? Well, if you assume that 2005 is the time when we start, meaning zero, then 2006 would be T1, 7 would be T2, 8 would be T3, 9 would be T4, and then 2010 would be T5. So the time can go all the way up to five years. And that should make sense. There's a five-year period between these two. And therefore, the domain would be written like this, that the time can be greater than or equal to zero. I'm reading that from right to left. So I know you might be looking at that. You're like, wait a minute, isn't that a less than sign? Well, if I read it from right to left, it's a greater than sign. And the time then must be less than or equal to, I'm reading it now from left to right, five. This is now the domain. And then the range is just now the list of possible y values. 
right? And the Y values in this problem are the people with common colds. So the same idea, the maximum number of people there will be is 12,025, right? Because that's the uh, number we're starting with, and we know that it's being decreased every year. And how many people will be afflicted uh, at, at five years' time? We can use our linear equation to calculate that, right? Couldn't we do C is equal to negative 205 times 5 plus 1225? And won't that tell me the number of people that are afflicted with a common cold in year 2010? Sure it will, right? So I'm going to plug that in, negative 205 times 5 plus 12,025. So we get about 11,000. So this is now the minimum number of people that will be aff afflicted with a common cold at some future point in time. So now I can find the range. In other words, the range here is going to be that it'll, 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 the minimum value, we start with the minimum, okay, 11,000 people. And the number of people afflicted with a common cold can be greater than I'm reading from right to left, 11,000. Or it could be, now I'm reading from left to right, or it could be less than the 12,025. So there's your range. Just the possible y values. That's it. So if this function is graphed, interpret the x and the y intercepts. You know, so here you have like a little graph. You're going to start the graph here up at the y intercept, which is 12,025. That's always how we start it. And every single year it's going to decrease. Okay. Every single year we're going to have a decrease. So pretend that this is one year. The new value here should be 12,025 minus 205. So let's do that quickly in the calculator. So the, that would be 11,820. So the new value here is 11,820. And this is going to happen for five years, right? This is definitely not to scale at the moment, but this is going to happen for five years time. So that means at some point in time, in five years, Okay, and actually, technically, that won't cross the x-axis there. So let me just reorganize this a little bit. One second, because that's it won't, it won't be zero. So let me just try to make this a little uh, neater, okay? So let's say, all right, so let's say here, that's going to be the second value. I'm going to crunch this together a little bit. You know, this is definitely not to scale, but let's say, and let me move this point on in a little bit. Let's say here's the original point, here's now the new point, and we can kind of see that, I'm going to make it over here a little bit, and let, we can see that, you know, at some future point in time, this is not to scale, by the way, at some future point in time, it's going to equal, uh, you know, zero. This is five, and this is some dot, dot, dot. We Again, it's not to scale. This is some future time in the um, way past five years. So in any case, it says find and interpret the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is going to be the 12,025. And that just represents the number of people afflicted um, with the cold at the start or at in the year 2005, all right? And then the y-intercept now, so we can use our linear equation to find the y-intercept. So we would use something like this, that uh, c is equal to negative 2,005 times the time plus the 12,025. Uh, the y-intercept, excuse me, the x-intercept happens when the y-value is zero, right? Some point over here. So the y value there is going to be zero. So I plug in zero there and realize that now I have one equation with one unknown. We love that because we can solve that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I don't have a lot of room, I'm going to just do the math quickly. So 12,025 divided by then 205. And that works out to be 58.7-ish. You know, so t is equal to 58.7. Now what that means is that in 58.7 years, the number of people afflicted with a cold will be zero. All right, probably not possible, but you know, that's what it means. Next one, if the function C is graphed, find and interpret the slope of the function. So we don't even have to graph it. Um, I'm gonna just copy this picture. All right, and the slope here, we know that this graph, uh, we graphed it according to this particular function. So I'm just gonna copy that. 
I'll shrink it down a little bit. All right. And we know now that the slope of this function in here represents the change in the number of people, right? Per change in time. Right, so every single year it's decreasing. The, peop the population of people afflicted with the cold is decreasing by 205. All right, that's, I guess, the significance of the slope. Uh, sure, okay. That's the slope, and that's the significance. So when will the output reach... Next question is, when would the output reach zero? Output is always known as the Y value. And in this problem, we the Y value is C. So when will the output reach zero? Well, guess what? We already calculated that, right? We already found that on out over here on the right hand side. I'm just copying it. Just give me two seconds. Right, didn't we already find this? We found it for the x-intercept. In other words, they could have re-asked re, uh, this question and they could have asked you, you know, what's the x-intercept? Again, you know, these are all, this is why you got to do practice because the questions can be phrased in a whole bunch of ways, but meanwhile we would solve them the exact same way. So you definitely want to do a lot of practice. So that when this output reaches zero is when the time is 58.7 about years. So about 58.7 years, zero people are, are afflicted. So what in what year will the number of people be 9,700? So they're asking us for the year. So we're solving for time. They're telling us the number of people that have the cold. So they gave us C. So if I use now my linear model, and this is the advantage of using linear models, is that we can now calculate things very, very quickly. I know it seems difficult in the beginning, but if you spend a you know a good amount of time here learning this, it will make your life easier later on. Doesn't that sound like a lot of things true with life? All right. So I got to solve this for time. So I'm going to subtract now the twelve thousand twenty-five on over. Okay, that's going to get me negative two thousand and five times time. I'm not going to divide yet because I still got to do the subtraction. So there's 9,700 minus then 12,025, negative 2,325. So negative 2,325. And then what you would do is you do, you would divide out the negative 205 from both sides, right? And we would get now the time. So negative divide by negative 205. And we get 11.3, approximately 11.3 years. So in 11.3 years, the, peop the amount of people afflicted with the common cold will be 9,700 9, or 9,700. And that should kind of make sense based on what we've done. So guys, hopefully this helps. I thought I was going to move through this faster, but I wound up not really. Um, so I still, I think I went into more, even a little more detail in the other one, but hopefully those two problems combined, check, check the link below. And uh, you, should, you, sh you should definitely begin to see how these problems are working. Thank you very much and have a great day.